So, what if I told you that your phone's exact location could be tracked using a message that you'll never ever see? We're talking about a surveillance tool that leaves absolutely no trace, no notification, because it's not a hack. It's actually a feature, and it's built directly into the very network your phone relies on every single second of the day. Just let that sink in for a second. A government agency or you know, someone else with the right kind of access can send a very special type of text message to your phone. It arrives, it does its job, and you never even know it was there. And just like that, they know where you are. So how is that even possible? And maybe more importantly, who has this kind of power? And is there anything you can do about it? We're going to get into the full breakdown of who can send these and the one true way to actually block them a little later in this explainer. Okay, so first things first. How can a message possibly be invisible? To really get that, we need to pop the hood and look at what's happening at the network level. A silent SMS, and you might hear it called a stealth SMS, or if you want to get technical, a type zero SMS, is a text message that your phone receives, it processes it, but it's been given a specific instruction, never show this to the user. So there's no notification, no vibration, not even a sound. As far as you're concerned, absolutely nothing happened. But here's the real kicker. Your phone does acknowledge that it got the message. It's just happening at the network level. It sends a tiny got it signal right back to the cell tower. See, the goal was never to deliver any content to you. It was to force your phone to send back that confirmation. That tiny, completely automated handshake, well, that's everything. So how in the world does a simple got it signal give away your physical location? Well, the answer is baked into the fundamental way your phone talks to the network. The whole process is actually pretty straightforward. An invisible SMS arrives, and it forces your phone's radio to wake up, just for a millisecond. In that tiny instant, as it sends back its confirmation, it also broadcasts a whole bunch of technical data to the nearest cell towers. By collecting these little whispers from a few different towers, an attacker can use some pretty simple geometry to triangulate your exact position. And here it is, the technical secret behind it all. This isn't some crazy, complex software exploit. It's a feature, not a bug. A completely standard SMS is sent, but one tiny little piece of data, a flag called the TP data coding scheme, is set to a specific value, hexadecimal 40. That flag is a direct command to the phone's hardware that basically says, hey, acknowledge me, but don't you dare tell the user I'm here. The phone is just doing what it's told, following the rules of the protocol. So what kind of information are we talking about here? What gets leaked in that handshake? Well, it's a whole list of unique identifiers. You can think of it like a street address, but for the cell network. It doesn't matter if you're on 2G, 3G, or 4G, your phone gives up the specific ID of the cell tower, and even the sector of the tower it's connected to. It also sends back data that helps calculate its exact distance from that tower. The technical names change with the technology, but the principle is exactly the same. Your phone is telling the network precisely which piece of hardware it's talking to, and that is the key to finding you. And it's surprisingly accurate. With just a few of these pings, an operator can narrow your location down to a pretty small area, usually somewhere between 50 and 150 meters. Now, if you're in a city, that's often accurate enough to know exactly which building you're in. And this, right here, is probably the most important thing to understand. You can turn off your phone's GPS, you can go into your settings and deny location permissions to every single app you have. It makes no difference. You cannot turn this off because it's happening at a level way below your operating system. It's part of the fundamental non-negotiable conversation between your phone and the cell tower. Okay, so that leads us to the really big question. If this is so powerful, who actually has the ability to send a silent SMS? And the answer, well, it's probably more groups than you'd think. Let's just break this down. At the very top of the pyramid, you've got the mobile operators themselves. They own the SMS centers, they can generate these things whenever they want. Then you have government agencies, who typically get access through a court order, forcing the operator to do it for them. But then things get a lot murkier. IMC catchers, those fake cell towers you hear about, can inject these messages directly into your phone. Anyone with access to the global SS7 signaling network can send them from literally anywhere in the world. And finally, you've got the commercial spyware firms, companies like NSO Group, who sell this exact capability as a service to their government clients. And make no mistake, this is not rare. Its use is widespread. Public records and various leaks have shown that tons of government bodies use this. Germany's federal police, the BKA, have reportedly sent over 150,000 of these in a single year. Intelligence agencies in the UK, federal agencies in the US like the FBI, and dozens of law enforcement units all across Europe use this as a standard tool in their surveillance playbook. 
But here's where it gets even more serious. While location tracking is a huge privacy concern on its own, for the really sophisticated attackers, a silent SMS is just the first step. It's the recon mission they run before launching a much, much more direct attack on your device. So on its own, a silent SMS is passive surveillance. It's not technically a hack. It isn't breaking into your phone software. But when it's used by a serious adversary, it becomes the tip of the spear. It's that initial recon that makes a full-blown system compromise not just possible, but much, much easier. You can almost see the two paths an attacker can take, with the silent SMS being the entry point. One path is just simple passive location tracking, but the other path, that's the start of an offensive operation. It's used to guide a fake cell tower, or to prepare the ground for deploying spyware like Pegasus, or just to set the stage for much deeper, more technical exploit. So think about how this escalates. Knowing your precise location makes deploying an MC catcher, that fake cell tower, almost trivial. It gives them the initial targeting data they need for attacks on the global SS7 network. It's the check an operator performs to see if a target is even online before they decide to fire an expensive digital weapon like Pegasus spyware. It is the setup before the final punch. Which, of course, brings us back to one of the questions we started with. When you're faced with a tool this powerful, a tool that's built into the very fabric of the mobile network, is there anything at all you can do to protect yourself? And I've got to be honest, here's the hard truth. You cannot completely block silent SMS. It's impossible. Because it uses the core, mandatory functions of the mobile network, there is no off switch. Your phone has to be able to receive these kinds of signals just to function as a phone. However, you're not totally helpless. You can definitely reduce your risk. The most basic step is to just rely on end-to-end -end encrypted messaging apps like Signal or WhatsApp instead of old-school SMS for your communication. If your device lets you, disabling 2G can help, since that's the oldest and weakest protocol. For the more technically savvy, a privacy-focused OS like Graphene OS can offer some lower-level protections. But for ultimate, guaranteed, 100% protection, the only real answer is a Faraday pouch, which physically blocks your phone from receiving any and all radio signals. And that quote really says it all, doesn't it? There is no perfect software defense because the system itself, the entire global mobile network, was built for connectivity and for reliability. It was never, ever built for user privacy. Privacy just wasn't a core design requirement from day one. Which leaves us with one final kind of uncomfortable thought. A silent SMS isn't some exotic shadowy hack. It's just a clever use of a standard built-in feature. So if our phones can be so easily and so invisibly tracked using the most basic fundamental functions of the network they depend on, it really forces you to ask, was privacy ever truly part of the design in the first place?